Next, we have the minimum structure head loss. If the system calculates a structure head loss that is lower than this value, this is the value that is going to be used. So I'm going to let that just be the actual and we'll set that to zero. The next option is going to be for if you are using the generic head loss method. If you're using any other head loss method, then this option is not going to be applicable. But if you are using the generic head loss method, then you have a few different options on how you want the governing upstream pipe selected, whether that be with the maximum flow and velocity, maximum velocity head, or the maximum bend angle. Next, we'll specify the basis for the structure loss mode, and that's either going to be based on the energy grade line or the hydraulic grade line. If you're using the energy grade line, the head loss across the structure is going to be the EGL in minus the EGL out, and the HGL is going to be calculated based off of the EGL. If we use the hydraulic grade, then head loss across the structure is going to be the HDL in minus the HDL out, and then the EGL is going to be calculated based off the HDL. Now there are a few rules here. If you are using HEC 22 second edition, then the structure loss method can be either one. It can be HDL or EGL, but EGL is going to be preferred. If you're using HEC 22 third edition, the structure loss must always be the EGL. And then when we're using the implicit or explicit solver inside of Civil Storm, the structure loss method is always going to be the HDL. So since I will be opting with HEC 22 third edition, I'll set the structure loss mode to energy grade. And next I'll move into including conduit flow travel time in the design. In legacy versions, the default value for this was false, which may have resulted in overdesigned pipes in shallow slope scenarios if the flow travel time is large with a significant reduction in flow due to attenuation. This has since been enhanced, and so now we can toggle this to true, and that will improve how the design computation works with shallow slope scenarios by taking into account travel time. Setting this to true allows you to tell the program to base the pipe sizes on the flow at the downstream end after the attenuation from travel time has occurred. So I'll be setting that to true. Next we have save detailed head loss data. If we have that as true, then the detailed head loss data will be saved after the computation. If false, then it will not be. And you'll just have a smaller results file. So I'll set that true as well. Next, I'll look at the gravity friction method, which I'll be setting to Manning's. And just a few notes on this. If you're using the GBF rational solver, then you do have the option to specify which friction method you'd like to be used. However, if you're using the implicit or explicit dynamic solvers, then conduits will always use the Manning's method for gravity friction. And here are the other options for this. Next, do we want to use explicit depth and slope equations, true or false? The standard approach to solving hydraulic equations to calculate depth and velocity in the pipe involves iteratively solving pipe geometry and head loss equations. If you have a large model, this can be slow. So if we set this to true, we can solve these equations explicitly without any iterations and significantly reduce the time to solve large models with the GVF solvers. This equation is going to be accurate within 1% over most of its range and no worse than 3%. So by default, I'm going to leave this at a false, and then if you are going to be running a larger model, you may consider changing that to true. Next, I'll look at ignore pipe travel time and carrier pipes, and then also correct for partial area effects. Ignore pipe travel time and carrier pipes and correct for partial effect settings. I'm going to relate how flow or velocity may decrease when moving downhill due to flow attenuation. Start with ignore pipe travel in carrier pipe. So first of all, a carrier pipe is a pipe with no subcatchment connected to the upstream node. When by default, StormCAD takes into account the attenuation of peak flow as it moves downstream by keeping track of upstream catchment properties and decreasing the peak intensity according to the time of concentration and travel. And this could result in flow or velocity that decreases as you move downhill. If you would like to ignore this specifically in a carrier pipe, then you can set this option to true. We also have correct for partial effects. So this makes StormCAD adopt the largest system time from all of the incoming flows that converge into a node. So I'm going to leave both of these set to false. 